وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. رسول الله. We are opening the library here in Ogden, Utah, in, in the Islamic Center of Kuwait, and this will be, inshallah, a means of khair and knowledge Amen. spreading in all of the United States. May Allah reward Sheikh Abu Abdullah and everybody who supported the library. Bismillah. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. حياك امين امين بارك الله فيكم تفضلوا باليمين 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 لا 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 بارك الله فيكم ما شاء الله الحمد لله ما شاء الله سبحان الله as you guys know سبحان الله the 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 books of the our religion is absolutely there is none in any other places that could compare to it it is uh, preserved, detailed, checked, uh, uh, and and the beauty of it, it is in abundant. Although a lot of it got lost, you know what I mean, due to the fact of uh, uh, wars and other stuff like that, but a lot of it got preserved, and the most important ones have been preserved. So one of the most important things is for us to go ahead and preserve the understanding of the Quran. And this is the section of Tafsir. Mashallah. So the beautiful thing, uh, may Allah reward uh, our Sheikh Muhammad here and the community here, is this is a great resource for all of America. I have not seen such a library in all of America, maybe even in the West, because not just the amount of books, because you could go to another library and find 10 times these many books, but the special uh, specific books that you need for each subject. And the great work the Sheikh has done on finding the best prints, the best muhaqqiq. So these are kutub of tafsir. And a tafasir, the explanation of the Qur'an are different types. As we know, the Qur'an is explained through uh, one, the Qur'an is explained with the Qur'an, like Adwal Bayan. And then the Qur'an is explained through Sahih Ahadith, the authentic narrations of the Prophet والسلام, or that of the Sahaba and the Tabi'un. This is the tafsir bil athar with the narrations. And these books here, you will find, for example, the Mawsu'a, Al-Tafsir, Al-Ma'thur, uh, Alhamdulillah, 17 volumes from Imam Al-Siyuti, one of the early great scholars who compiled on the subject, Tafsir uh, Ibn Kathir, and this is no doubt, maybe one of the most essential introductory books into Tafsir bil Athar, and this is uh, an amazing print of it. Alhamdulillah, he has other copies of Ibn Kathir as well. Uh, from here, you will see other types of tafsir, like that that is bil mawdu'a, yani bil, it's with the subject. A tafsir, uh, yani mawsu'a, this is a collection of tafsir that goes by the subject. So if it's about Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, it will give a whole section and show you all the different ayat and their explanations about that. So by subject. So if you want to look at a verse and what has been narrated, you have the mathur, you have the ones with athar. If you want to just look up a particular subject, where is it mentioned in the Quran, what all has been said about it by the ulema of tafsir, this is another amazing work. Fadl wa ta'kallam mm -hmm. well, Another one from the, the, the tafsir uh, uh, by the narrations and traditions is the tafsir of Sheikh al-Maghrawi, uh, which is a recent tafsir as well too. Uh, the Sheikh is alive and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve him. Uh, but uh, at early, uh, throughout his, his uh, uh, college studies and master and stuff, he was really attached into tafsir. And he did uh, his uh, master thesis uh, uh, about that as well too. And that 40 volumes that you see on top, right over there, it's called Tadabbur wal Bayan fi Tafsir al-Qur'ani bi Sahih al-Sunan. Wherein, Hafizahullah uh, uh, Ta'ala, he, 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 he took some of the books and the works of Sheikh Suyuti, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and also the work of, of uh, uh, Mawsu'a. And, but what he did uh, extra is he only then chose the most authentic of narrations and traditions to place it in his tafsir. And he didn't just uh, stick to uh, uh, um, 
narrations uh, 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 that has to do with the, the reason of revelation or the explanation of the ayah, but he also got the narrations regarding linguistics, the, the, the reason, uh, the, the purpose of it, uh, or the cause of its revelation, or the, or, or the reason for its revelation of the surah, uh, the, the importance of that surah. That it, he went in great detail explaining Habibullah uh, Ta'ala uh, that, and he saved you. You go, you go in behind him and check him. You know what I mean? Because whatever he placed in there is only the authentic. He does mention in there where it is narrated, how it is narrated, who mentioned it, and stuff like that for you to go and check. There is no doubt about it. But the beauty about it is that he, he only mentioned the authentic narrations and traditions from the companions and the others, subhanAllah. And it 40 is like volumes. 40 volumes, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, it, it is something that really we should be proud of. We should be proud. This... Really, we should be honored and privileged mm. to have something like this. Not just in Utah and the States, but the Ummah, subhanAllah. For us to have something that we could trace back to the Sahaba, the companions, the, 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 the Tabi'een, the, our scholars. We have a chain of narrations that will go ahead and check and know exactly who is who and, and, and who, who wrote what. And, and, and if somebody is to go ahead and claim that they have written something, we have scholars that go back and say, oh no. <laughs> That is not the one who wrote it, and mm. the one who wrote it is this. And subhanAllah, Allah, this, is, this is a science in it by itself, subhanAllah, that, the, the, you know, second to none, mm. you know. This here now, you'll find another aspect of tafsir. So we talked about tafsir of Qur'an bil Qur'an, Qur'an bil Sunnah, yani ahadith al-Sahiha, tafsir of Qur'an bil aqwal al-Sahaba, aqwal al-Tabi'un, but there is also the tafsir of Qur'an with the Arabic language. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan Arabiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an in a clear Arabic language. So looking at the Qur'an from a linguistic perspective, this is one of the books you have seen in my library personally as well. The Shaykh also has with it, and this is a tafsil fi Arab al-ayat al-tanzil, this is a collection, a recent collection, collecting all of the linguistic aspects, the A'rab, looking at where is the uh, fa'il and maf'ul, the muftada and khabar and taqdeem and ta'khir, like looking at the linguistic aspects of tafsir. And on top of that, he has many of the earlier, the asas of where these early scholars put together this work. I wish we could go through each work, but for the sake of time, just going to understand the concepts here. What is beautiful about that? is we have the Qur'an preserved in its original language, not in the common street Arabic of today, but in the language it was revealed in the way that it was understood by the Sahaba. Here he will mention actual narrations many times to explain the wording. Now, I want to make a point here for the people watching. This type of research you will not find in any other religious tradition. I have read the works of uh, the Jews on the Talmud and the Rashi and their different commentaries and they go into great detail. They have volumes and volumes of it. But there is no checking for authenticity. There is no Sanad. There is no chain of narrators. There is no Sahih from Da'if. A call of a, rabbi, of, of a rabbi, the statement of a rabbi is taken as a hujjah. But here in Islam, we don't do that. When we want to make tafsir, we don't just say a sheikh said. We, as the Sheikh mentioned, we look at the chain of narrators. Who does it go back to? The companions, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Is it authentic chain? This kind of work you will not find in the Christian tradition. You find many books done, and I have many in my own library about the Bible and commentaries, MacArthur and others, but you will not find in it a checking of the authenticity. You will not find a chain of narrators. In fact, most of the books of the New Testament are from unknown narrators. We don't know who wrote them. What we call in Arabic as majhul. And as the Shaykh knows, we wouldn't accept that in Islam, even from a statement of a companion, let alone yani, when we explain the Qur'an. And this shows the rich heritage of Islam, the scholarly heritage of Islam. And we want this to be an encouragement for all those watching to be those future scholars. Much of this work is still going on. As he mentioned, a contemporary work, 40 volumes. So that means it's not like, okay, it's all been done. The earlier traditions are there for you to now expand and develop upon. Faddal Sheikh. Wallahi, before we go any farther, there is one book I want to highlight a little bit. It's Mu'jam al Rasm al Uthmani. Hmm. Um, this is a Mu'jam, this is an encyclopedia of why the Mus'haf of Uthman, radiyallahu anhu arda, why is it written the way it is written? 
why Ibrahim one way is written one way and then in another surah is written another way why the Aleph is, is, is dropped and why it is not dropped in another place uh, it is absolutely a science in it by itself and we don't just have the Mus'haf of Uthman preserved but we have the reason why the Mus'haf of Uthman is written the way it is written and again who goes to that great detail subhanallah if, if it is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised it is a preservation we would not have had it we of would not have had it so and and it is it's and you'll find in some of them that uh, uh, sometimes they actually like for for, for example it it tells you why it is written this way and in what mushaf it is written this way and who said it needs to be written this way and what proof it is from the linguist from the linguist point of view that it is written this way every single word in the quran if mm. Mus'haf Uthman radiyallahu anhu and it tells you all of the roots here is the root of it akhadha, and then it tells you in different forms of what it came with and this is in every single so word in the Quran you know what I mean of Mus'haf Uthman so walillah alhamdulillah and this is subhanallah not a small little book you know what I mean mm. and it goes of course alphabetically you know what I mean and it is it is big thick seven volume a great book and a great resource for you to know why is one letter, one word is written one way and then written another way. Wallahi it's an honor. Wallahi it's an honor. Subhanallah. And then you look at the Christian tradition, they don't even have the Aramaic uh, manuscripts. Subhanallah. Yeah, subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times, Sheikh Uthman gets. Uh, uh, by uh, those people that come uh, specifically to debate and uh, Sheikh, uh, may Allah reward him tremendously he's not into the debate and, 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 and this is this is from the Aqeedah Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah you know what I mean it is it is not for us to go ahead and seek debates you know what I mean it is not for us to go ahead and, and, and do so uh, Imam Ahmad stated it in his soul of Sunnah and stuff like that he is there to give da'wah yes. but when they come uh, uh, and they are uh, uh, in that mindset uh, it is upon us to go ahead and defend our religion. If it yeah. is debate, it is debate. Yes. And we have we don't shy away from that. But this is not our goal, walillah alhamdulillah. Mm. Nor is the goal of the Shaykh, walillah alhamdulillah. I know that for sure. It, it, is, uh, it is rather though when it is, when it is, subhanallah, forced upon you, it's a reaction. Mm. It is nothing but a reaction. And a lot of time he's asked about the qiraat. How do you recite this? How do you do this? How do you, what dot is where and stuff like that. And just to let you know, these one, two, three, four, five, six shelves that you see, it's about the Qiraat. You know, the seven, the ten, what they are, how they are written, what are they, what... Subhanallah, I mean, we, we have detailed explanation for every dot in the Qur'an. Subhanallah. For every dot, why is it there and the importance of it? Nothing, no single letter in the Qur'an, none, no single letter in the Qur'an is addition for no reason. You mm. know what I mean? The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ The kaf, that kaf right there, is not an addition. This is an, an intended addition by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so it, is not, it is not for us to take anything for granted. Mm. You know, subhanallah. So, so I know that he goes and, and, and he gets confronted with, how do you write this? And wallahi, I love it when subhanallah, he comes to him and he said, write this, and he writes it without dots. This way, we could read it any which way we want based on the authentic narrations and the, the recitation that has been passed down on us with the authentic chain of narrations. I'll tell you something interesting. And like the Sheikh said, I want to emphasize once again, and as I've said in repeated videos, I'm not a monadhar, I'm not a debater. Alhamdulillah, I'm a da'i. I'm not a Sheikh, I'm not a talib ilm even, maybe a beginning student, but I'm somebody who calls towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if any of you... Islamophobes want to come and debate will end your career any day of the week. <laughs> we're not there for debates, but we're not afraid of any of you. Now, alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed this ummah with this type of knowledge. When we, they asked us to write a, a verse and we wrote it in the way that it's in the Mus'haf Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one Mus'haf standard that was set and copies were made and sent out from that, they thought I made a mistake mm. and they made big posters. <laughs> 
<laughs> copying it written without dots, without harakat, with their ignorance, not realizing that is how the Sahaba wrote it down. We have now these books to explain how to recite because the Arab, they were so good with their language, they didn't need dots. They didn't need a fatha, damma, kasra, zair, zabar, pesh, sukoon, jazm. They didn't need any of that. But when the ajam, when the non-Arabs started to recite the Qur'an make mistakes, then alhamdulillah the great scholars of Islam added the, the accent markings to be able to preserve how it's recited. But we know that all of the Qur'at that we have, the, all the different styles of recitation, they all go back to the one standard that was set by Uthman ibn Affan radiyanhu in the Rasam as explained by uh, Rasam of Uthmani. And these are all from Wahi. These are from the Ahruf al-Sab'a, the seven modes of recitation that Allah revealed through Wahi, through revelation that are mentioned in Mutawatir, in numerous Ahadith. So Alhamdulillah, even the styles of re reciting have all been preserved with the Sanad. Each Qur'at has to have Mutawatir Asanid to the Prophet ﷺ. That is the beauty of Islam. How well preserved is this religion? And this is by the will of Allah. And Allah made the juhud, the work of those great scholars of the past. May Allah have mercy on them that spent their lifetime on this as the means for that. I, I, I want to add one more thing to the Quran, Wallahi, you know, if you don't mind. It's, it's because uh, it's regarding, th they think that the Quran is only memorized. Yes, this is absolutely. It is the way of the, how the Quran is transmitted. This is how the Quran is transmitted, is by recitation. Sitting in front of a sheikh, he goes ahead and re you recite it on him, he corrects you and you go on and then he'll become your sheikh and then so on and so forth, all the way to the Prophet ﷺ. That is absolutely true. But during the life of the Prophet ﷺ, it was also written. That's why the Prophet yes. ﷺ had Kutab al-Wahi, hmm. the Wahi uh, uh, scribers, uh, 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 Muawi and Ali and other than them, they, they, they used to write immediately when it was uh, 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 revealed upon the Prophet ﷺ. So it is, not only, it is not only by memorization, Although that this is the this is the the the, the most uh, 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 the number one method of transmitting, but it is also we have it absolutely written at the time of its re re uh, revelation, which no none that I know no religious not, tradition that, has it that has it that it is during like the Old Testament when mm -hmm. when did it uh, the, Sheikh, the uh, oldest manuscript that we find today mm -hmm. as they claim is the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is about two hundred years before Isa ibn Maryam. Meaning it is nowhere close to the time of Musa alayhi salam or Dawood alayhi salam, not a close to David or Moses. No doubt that any historic researcher will tell you that the Old Testament or the Torah has been lost in its original writings. The original writings fall of Babylon, the displacement of the people of Israel, and it was rewritten from stories and songs. The oldest manuscripts are only 200 years before Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. So that means the original manuscripts are nowhere. And the New Testament, the earliest manuscripts that we have for the Christian Bible are going to be from the, the there's a one little scrap less than a credit card that is going to be the second century. So this is the, the first semi-complete, which has few missing verse, but a rather complete manuscript is from the fourth century, 300 something years yes. after Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu salam, peace and blessings be upon Jesus, the great oh, prophet of Allah. Musa, I, and Musa and David, Dawood, all prophets, we love them all. We say peace and blessings be upon them. And they were not written in the language of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. They are in Konaic Greek. So no Aramaic. No Aramaic. If you find Aramaic Bible today, it was translated from the Greek. Oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> Backward. So, backwards. Subhanallah. The earliest manuscripts, and in fact, Every single manuscript that I have seen of the standard, meaning the King James uh, New Testament, has been based on Greek. There are some that are like what's called the Ethiopian Bible, uh -huh. but those are also different. The books are different, chapters are different. The Catholic Bible has different number of chapters like Tobit that are not there in the, in the Christian Bible or the King James Version. And you will find the same to be true for the Greek Orthodox Bible. Alhamdulillah in the Quran and all of these Qur'at, how many surahs in the Quran? 114. Any Qur'an that has different? No. Any of them didn't begin with Al-Fatiha? No. Didn't end with Al-Nas? No. Alhamdulillah. Oh, One Qur'an. You can recite it. 
in styles, but one Quran preserved in writing, as you can look at the Birmingham manuscript that has been carbon dated to the lifetime of the Prophet and the early time of the Khilafah Abu Bakr radiyanhu, written and memorized by millions across the Muslim world that are alive today. Here in America we have many with the chain of narrators all the way back to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to Jibreel, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, we'll, we'll move to speed things up inshallah ta'ala, we'll move to the sunnah section inshallah ta'ala. Uh, uh, so, again, sunnah is not just the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sunnah is the saying, the action, that, that, that how the Prophet ﷺ looked, how his manner were, uh, how, how, how he dealt with the people, his silent approval. This is the sunnah and the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, uh, the number of gray beards that he had, uh, that he had, the number of gray hair that he had on his beard, the, the, the space that he had between his teeth, uh, uh, any description of him, khalqi or khuluqi, whether it has to do with the, how Allah created him or how he, Allah uh, perfected his manners, it is all narrated to us. Uh, also, a common misconception out there that the Sunnah was not written <laughs> during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Sunnah, wallahi, was written during the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is preserved. Uh, and and you you find I don't have the earliest one. Unfortunately, we were not able to get the, the earliest one. You know, you know. But we do have we do have. Uh, Subhanallah. A hadith Abi Ishaq, Abi Ishaq Sabi'i. Mm. Um, before Muwatta Malik, before Musnad Abu Hanifa, we have number of books that had been written before uh, these these great scholars. And uh, the beauty the beauty about it is that these narrations have between them two narrators, two, like like one, two, and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muwatta Malik has thirathiyat. Uh, Imam Ahmed, Muslim Imam Ahmed, has multiple thirathiyat, i.e. only three people in the, hmm. in the chain of narration. You know what I mean? And along with the, with the, with the Muwatta, and along with the other, we have the explanation. The scholars have done a great job. They, they do not just preserve the original work, you know what I mean? But they also preserve the, the explanation of them. And, and this is very important. Why? Is because this is the only way we could go ahead and understand our religion, not by our whims and desires and other influences that we have in society and stuff like that. Those who play a factor in understanding, there is no doubt about it. But there isn't anything that will, subhanAllah, that will give us or get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that it has already been done for us. We just need to go ahead and pick it up, inshaAllah ta'ala. And this is something beautiful. I mean, just to show an example, many of these there is only one person between uh, Abu Ishaq here and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyanhu. So with one narrator, he gets all the way to the Sahaba. And this is something that we have narrated, written, documented uh, right in front of us. Right? And this is meaning only two people between the author and the Prophet Ali And that's true for the Muatta Imam Malik. He has the ones that have only two narrators, like for example, Imam Malik reports from a nafi' from Abdullah ibn Umar, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And those mawquf a hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, that means only one narrator between Abdullah ibn Umar and Imam Malik. And there were writings before this, that in the book that I'm kind of jumping ahead, in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, Imam Ahmed says that I saw the written of the students of Buhareira and compared it to that which was memorized. So the, the, this, this delusion that some of the people that reject hadith are trying to put forward, that hadith were not written down during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ is proven wrong from manuscripts that we have and also from hadith themselves. Many of them will quote a hadith where Rasulullah ﷺ told the Sahaba, don't write what I say, only write the Quran. But the funny thing is they're quoting a hadith to disregard hadith. <laughs> if you don't believe in hadith, then how can you quote it as an evidence? <laughs> and that hadith, if you accept that, then no doubt in the early times, when the Sahaba may not have understood the difference between Kalam Allah, Ghair Makhluq, the Quran, that is the words of Allah, not creation, and what Rasul would say. 
But if you accept that hadith, then you have to accept the hadith where Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Before I forbid you, now I allow you because nothing comes from this mouth except what Allah has revealed. Yeah? So that means hadith were written down. And as the order of the Prophet Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyan, wrote down the ahkam, the rulings of when somebody dies accidentally and send it to the people of Yemen upon the request of the Prophet Many of the Sahaba, many of the khutbahs we have, many of the Sahaba they said we saw the risala, the, 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 the writing that was sent on behalf of the Prophet Not the Prophet wrote it himself because he couldn't read or write alayhi salatu salam, but he would order people like Ali ibn Abi Talib and Umar ibn Khattab who were people who could write to write down and the Sahaba said we saw this written from the order of Rasulullah salam. So those were a hadith that were written, no doubt to that. Alhamdulillah. I, I mean, again from Muwatta to Musnad al-Shafi'i uh, and then you have uh, Sanani, Ibn Shayba and they are all chronological. They are all in a chronological. They are ordered in a chronological order. They are both in a chronological order, and um, and uh, my my. Uh, the, so so here is the, the hadith section. Here is the biggest section. Uh, why is that? And why not the the, the the tafsir? The hadith is it included the tafsir of the Quran as well too. Mm. So it is also embedded in it. So just because we put it in the tafsir, that doesn't mean in the hadith section, that doesn't mean it doesn't relate to tafsir as well too. El, almost every single author, they have at, at, the, uh, at their books, they have a book of tafsir, book of tafsir, explaining the ayat, explaining the, the surahs, the reason for its revelation, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Uh, but those, they are specified, targeted this way. This is embedded within it. This is the one thing. The other thing is, is, as I stated earlier, the, the Sunnah does not just mean the saying of the Prophet wasallam. Rather, it included therein the actions, the statements, the, 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 the silent approval, the description of the Prophet, whether it may be a characteristic one or, or, or a physical one. And, and it all was narrated to us. So therefore, by default, it is, it is, it is more, you know what I mean, uh, the way it is transmitted to us. And that is why the scholars have took a great care in writing it down and passing it on with the authentic chain of narrations to us. And those that they are passed on to us without an authentic chain of narration, which will come to it, inshallah ta'ala, in another section about the, the science of men and so on and so forth, we'll be able to go ahead and sift it and make sure that only the cream of the crops comes out and make sure only the authentic stuff that, that yeah. uh, inshallah ta'ala, passed on to our ummah and our generation. The science of men meaning the biographies of narrators of hadith. Yeah. We don't want anybody to think we're getting red-pilled here or something. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, this, this is a book I do want to bring your attention to. And uh, the Shaykh, mashallah, in his house also has a, a beautiful copy of it. This is the Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. We hear many a people say hadith were not written down until 200 years or 300 years or this or that, thinking Imam Bukhari was the first one to write down hadith. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the great scholar of Islam, he was born in 164 Hijri. He died in 241 Hijri. He wrote this book. It is here in 52 volumes. 52 volumes. Look at this beautiful book here. And this is with the checking of the narrations. And uh, Shoaib al Arnud, mashallah. The result, Ahmed Shakir also has a takhrij of it. A beautiful work that was written down in less than 150 years from the Hijri, not from the death of Rasulullah. Imam Malik's Muatta and the hadith that were collected by Abu Ishaq are even earlier than that. These are written works. Look at how huge this work by itself is enough for us to get all the different subjects. Such a beautiful work. Allah has blessed us with other books of hadith as well. But this is around 40,000 hadith. And this is a scholar in that early times with, and then this has many of them that only have three between him and the, and the Prophet والسلام, only two between him and the Sahaba. These beautiful works, and may Allah reward these great scholars Amen. from the Salaf of Salihin, those earlier generations that did this work, that this is without Google, this is without laptop, this is without, uh, re this is all from their memorizing. This scholar particularly, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, memorized one million ahadith. Alf, Alf, beautiful. I mean, the Arab didn't have a word for million. They couldn't count that high at the time. They had nothing they could count that high. So they'd call it a thousand, thousand. Mm -hmm. One million narrations. Now, just to be clear, that doesn't mean the text is different of all of one million because scholars of hadith, each 
chain is considered a hadith. So some of them have one text, but many 70 or 50 chains of narrations. He memorized one million, collected around 40,000 something for his musnad. And this is here in the library as a reference and with this ummah. Okay. And, and story about Imam Ahmad and his son, Allah, who is also a scholar, Abdullah. Hmm. Uh, Imam Ahmad came to him and told him, okay, here is a certain set of number of hadith to memorize. And it was a big number, in thousands, I forgot the number. And so uh, Abdullah went and memorized them and came back and said, uh, I memorized them. He said, okay, be aware of them, those are weak. <laughs> be aware of them, those are weak now. Okay? So then he gave him another sign and said, those are the one, the authentic ones. You know what I mean? So, so they, they didn't just memorize the authentic ones. They also knew the, 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 the weak ones. And they passed it on to us for us. It's 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 a tradition for us to be passed on to mm. for us to know what was said, and they did it with their chain of narration for us to check then its authenticity. That doesn't mean every single thing that is written in their book it is authentic. No, nope. we're not saying that. Only very few people, scholars, have claimed that. Bukhari, Muslim, Rahimahumullah. You know what I mean? Very few people, but the majority of our scholars they narrated it as it comes to them with the chain of narration, and then they entrusted us then to do the work. They have given us who the chain, who is in the chain, and then they told us their grade. Mm. And the least we could do is, subhanAllah, just connect the dots and find out. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this way, if the, just, just contemplate upon that. If the weak one is preserved, what about the authentic one? Mm. You know what I mean? If the weak one is preserved and we know what it is, what about the authentic one? Hmm. And the Arabs had, subhanAllah, like one of the reasons that the scholar says that the Prophet ﷺ was sent to the Arabs is because back then, at that time, they were absolutely excellent. Not now. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. They were excellent in memorizing. It's true. They were like line of poetry, of so thousand line of poetry and stuff like that. A thousand, you know. It's ten thousand lines. Ten thousand yeah, lines, mu'allaqat, you know, you'll see them. You'll see like, oh, subhanAllah, it's like no big deal. Yeah. It was just like, it was, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them for many reasons. You mm. know what I mean? One of them is because the strength of memorizing. Yeah. So uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to preserve that religion and wanted to preserve the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, so this is all hadith section along mm. with the... Uh, it continues. <sighs> Allah. Along with this section, right? This, this, this right here. Um, actually, these two two sections right there, they are hadith, you know what I mean? Fadal. Barakallah. Yeah, mean, barakallah. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, Bukhari is, uh, one of, one of my favorite books after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari. Mm. Uh, we tried over here to go ahead and get the most authentic of copies. Dar mm. Tasil's uh, 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 print, there is no doubt, uh, uh, it was still recently one of the best prints out mm. there. Until Bayt al-Sunnah, Jazahumullah khair. Mashallah. Which is the one right there up on top, the, the, the large, looking, the large green ones, letters. You, yeah. you know, until they came out with their print recently. Actually, it was last year during Ma'arad al Riyadh, mm. uh, the, the, the books, uh, book fair in Riyadh, uh, is where they, uh, they revealed it. Wherein they didn't just uh, rely on an, uh, a Sultaniyah, mm. but they did on that and many other manuscripts that had come. And it has the most authentic, so far, according to some of the scholars, hmm. print out there. And it is a phenomenal Subhanallah. and phenomenal one, insha'Allah ta'ala. And uh, we try to go ahead and collect. There are hundreds of explanation and abridgment of Sahih al-Bukhari. Hmm. Uh, we only were, gather, we were able to gather about 35, 36 of them. You know only? I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, talking about, you know, subhanAllah. Oh, mashallah. So, 
Some of them has to do with linguists, again, some of them with the narration, some of them with the uh, 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 balagha, some mm. of them uh, uh, different, some of them approach them in a different way. And it is, it is phenomenal, subhanAllah, mm. the work has been done on the two sahih. You know what mm. I mean? And for somebody now to come and say, okay, uh, 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 the sahih is not preserved and this is not preserved, subhanAllah. Like how and could how could so many different scholars, subhanAllah, come and explain a book that doesn't even exist? Mm. And, and this is something very important for everybody watching to understand. Imam Bukhari Sahih is not something he wrote as a, as a book by himself. Meaning some people say as if he's the first. No, we just showed you the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. And Imam Bukhari quotes from Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. So those ahadith were already there. Many of them were already written. Imam Bukhari, his great work was to go through all those narrations. Like he mentioned, uh, the Shaykh, that Imam Ahmad, he collected the weak as well. Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan mm -hmm. criticizes that hadith. Imam Al Tirmidhi collects and says this is weak. If they hadn't done that, how would we know this weak from authentic? If we only collected Sahih, a hadith, and somebody brought a weak hadith, how would we know it's weak? How could we explain it? Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, may Allah reward them and others who did a, in, in the same intention like Ibn Hibban, Ibn Khuzayma, and Al-Hakim. But Al-Bukhari and Muslim are the ones that reached their goal, may Allah reward them all. Went through those earlier books and collected only the top level chains. Not that this is the only Sahih Hadith in the world. No, there are many other Sahih Hadith. But they went and found the best of the best and collected them in a manner that is amazing. We don't have time for this today, uh, but the Tarajim al Abbab, the explanation of the chapters, Imam Bukhari has so much benefit as uh, one of our Shaykh, Abu Muhammad Amin al Bishawri, may Allah uh, protect him, and Shaykh Ulam Allah before him, may Allah have mercy on him. When they explain the Al Bukhari and they explain just the fiqh benefits from the chapter headings, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Now, the Shaykh is humble, he said, yeah, it's few, but look at how many of the explanations. Two, or three that I think are very important for every student of knowledge to be aware of. No doubt the first and foremost is the Fath al-Bari of Ibn Hajr Asqalani. As they say, La Hijra Bad al-Fath, yani from the hadith that there is no migration after Fath. This was said about the virtue of this book, Ibn Hajr Asqalani's Fath al-Bari. And Alhamdulillah, the Shaykh has multiple prints of it, excellent prints. Now, I do want to point out, that this work was based on a work by Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, the great scholar. And as Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan said that if he had completed it, it would have been better than this. Mm. And it, as he got to the seven volumes that we have printed today, it is the best. But may Allah have mercy on him, he passed away. Ibn Hajar al-Qalani, to honor Ibn Rajab's work, mm. he named it the same word name. And it took him 50 years, yeah, right Shaykh? 50 years ago, I Around 50 years of this scholar's work to write this amazing work. Even though he wrote so many other beneficial works, no doubt in almost every ilm from the ulum, like in Mustalah, when we look at Nukhba, in Hadith of Ahkam, look at Bulugh, and so on, we, we benefit from Nihajr Asqalani. But this work is probably his greatest gift to the Ummah. Fath al-Bari is an amazing work. The other that I will mention as well here, is now do this this book of uh, Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. Yes, it's Fath al Bari fi Sharh Sahih al Bukhari, the seven volume that the Sheikh referred to. Right. This there. is this is this is the book that uh, uh, the, uh, the this is what uh, uh, Ibn Hajar Asqalani honored uh, the name of the, his book similar to it, uh, but he completed it. Rahimahum uh, Allah mm. and uh, Sheikh Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, Rahimahum Allah mm. Taala, uh, passed away before the completion of it. And I will mention again two others that I found here that I don't find in many libraries and they're very beneficial works and this is Umdatul Qari of Al-Aini, Badruddin Al-Aini and this is uh, also an explanation of Bukhari in 20 volumes here, mashallah, in this print and here on top you will see one uh, I think it's in 20, or no, it's in 30, 36 volumes, subhanallah, this is uh, I have not seen this print, it looks beautiful and this is by Ibn Nahwi, who's famously known as Ibn Mulaqin, even though he preferred being called Ibn Nahwi himself. But this was a great Shafi'i scholar and a scholar of Hadith and a scholar of Takhrij, a scholar of checking the narrations. 
although the Ahadith al-Bukhari are obviously authentic, but he gets into Ibn Malakin in his Sharh, an amazing work on just discussing the narrators, going over the lives and the different opinions and so on about the narrators as well as explaining the wordings and so on. So beautiful collection and uh, may Allah bless it. Barakallah fikum. One of the great books of Ibn Hajar as well too is At-Taghliq. Uh, At-Taghliq hmm. al-Ta'liq ala Sahih al-Bukhari. It is in five volumes. As you know, Sahih al-Bukhari, Bukhari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, has authored his, his book with uh, specific uh, conditions. Very stringent, strict condition in order for him to pass it as an authentic. And for those ones that do not meet his conditions, he, although they are written there, but they do not meet his condition. We, the scholars, never looked at them to be part of his Sahih. Hmm. So somebody say, oh, look, Bukhari narrated this hadith, and this hadith, uh, it has a disconnected chain of narration. Uh, is as Bukhari did not know that, you know what I mean? <laughs> he told you, uh, yeah. he, he already knew that, and he written it, you know what I mean? But the beauty about Ibn Hajar, radiyallahu anhu, wallahi, rahimahullah, that, that, that he came, that book, and he took every single mu'allaq hadith, the suspended hadith, that is disconnected chain of narration that the Bukhari mentioned it, and he tied it all the way back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he tied it all the way back mm, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to tell you that, that yeah, the, those did not meet the Bukhari standards, but that doesn't mean they don't have a, a right. chain of narration that goes back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Bukhari, sometimes he would uh, name his uh, title, his chapter hidden with those narrations mm. yani, uh, uh, to draw a benefit to them. You know what I mean? Although they did not meet his strict conditions that he put forward for to accept his hadith. But he then comes and rahimahullah ta'ala and ties it all up subhanallah. and subhanallah for you to be more as certain about the beautiful and the magnificent of that book of Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala wa for the sake of time, we go to yes. the Muslim, uh, the Sahih Ibn Muslim. I mean, the second most authentic book, uh, 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 you know, uh, after the Bukhari, uh, from the Sunnah point of view. Um, also, scholars have taken great care in explaining uh, that great book. Uh, uh, the most important of work, of course, is the work of Imam Al-Nawawi, uh, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, yes. In the book, in Manhaj. Uh, 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 so, so, so what happened is with, with that book, uh, there is a newer print right now for Dar al Manhaj. Ah. Okay. Uh, and Sheikh Mazan al Sursawi uh, did tahqiq on it. Mashallah. It's actually one of the greatest uh, uh, print for it. And he did a great care for it. But the best explanation, in my opinion, and you know what I mean, is the opinion of a recent scholar hmm. that just passed away. A year, less than a year ago, hmm. and that is the Sheikh Muhammad bin Adam at Yubi, Rahimahullah Taala. And just so you you know what it is, it is it is that book right here. It's Al Bahr Al Muhit Al Tajaj, Rahimahullah Taala, and it is forty five volumes. Subhanallah. Okay, and this is just the introduction, two extra volumes for forty seven volumes. Allah Akbar. And they just recently, about a week or two ago. They went mm. ahead and now they released two more volumes that has the index of it. Mm. Two more volumes that has the index of it. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he went to great deal and tell you that this hadith is a, has that many narrators in it. This hadith, all Basri in it. This hadith, all Shami in it. Mm. The, the, who narrated it and, and the scholar's opinion about the hadith, the fiqh that could be derived from it. Uh, uh, the hidden defects that some people may look at it uh, uh, Yani, subhanallah, he did a great job. This is an encyclopedia by, in it by itself, subhanallah. And the scholars have praised it tremendously for a great reason. This is an amazing work. And I just want to show a couple of things. It is not that it just used really big print size. <laughs> and that's why, look at the size of the print. It's actually a very small print. And that just tells you how much knowledge this great Shaykh, and again, as the Shaykh mentioned, he recently passed away in Mecca. May Allah have mercy upon him. I went to visit him in Mecca before he passed away. We were there at a bookstore and some of the students met us and they took us. And this Shaykh, when you saw him, he was very simple, very humble man. I'm a nobody from the US and he greeted me and met with me. 
And this Sheikh, subhanAllah, he has written multiple works like this. Mm -hmm. This is not his only work. If this is all he wrote in a lifetime, it would be a sufficient. Mm -hmm. But he has written such amazing work. May Allah accept it from him. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Sheikh Ali Adam al-Ethiopi. May Allah have mercy upon him. And uh, this should inspire our youth and tulab ilm to see that till today such work are needed. As the Sheikh mentioned that this has been considered the best sharh explanation of Sahih Muslim and it's a recent work. MashaAllah. And the Sheikh, the Sheikh yani, along, along with the explanation of Muslim and before he does the explanation of Muslim, he did the explanation of a Nasa'i. Yes. Also in four of some, <laughs> yes. some volumes. Uh, you know what I mean? And then Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he was in the process of completing a Tirmidhi, hmm. uh, subhanAllah, and stopped at number 40, uh, 20, 22, 21. I believe, and now they're going to print three more. SubhanAllah. Uh, uh, but he stopped short about a thousand or so hadith, uh, SubhanAllah, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, has, uh, has uh, uh, what's it called? He's taken his soul and he passed away Allah mercy on before him. the completion of um, hmm. uh, that uh, Tirmidhi, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. But we wish now, and we, we, we call up on the students of the, the Sheikh to, to, to do what some of the students of Sheikh Muhammad Amin al Shanqiti have done with the Adwa al Bayan, and hopefully they could complete it in the same style, insha'Allah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them to do that. So the next we'll discuss is the Sunan of Imam Abu Dawood. And once again, uh, not to think that these were the first people to write hadith. Abu Dawood also being a student Imam Ahmad who has narrated a hadith from Imam Ahmad himself and, and preserved the fiqh of Imam Ahmad as well. He has a book, Masali Imam Ahmad as well. So a couple of things that I'm going to point out and then the Sheikh is going to point out some. One of them is this is a book called Un al Ma'bud and this is the explanation ala Sunan Abi Dawood written by a somewhat recent scholar and this is Sheikh Azim Abadi from India. May Allah have mercy upon him. And even though he is uh, somewhat recent, uh, and he died less than a hundred years ago, this has become the gold standard for the Sunan of Abu mm -hmm. We have the works of Al-Khattabi, we have the, some works from Ibn Al-Qayyim on, on Sunan Abu Dawud, Raslan. We have also the works from very early scholars like uh, a Siyuti has a Hashi on it, you have a Sindhi's work on it, you have all the... but. This book today, subhanAllah, if you go to uh, academic circles, has become a, a, a central piece in understanding the Sunan of Abi Dawood from an Indian scholar, uh, Sheikh uh, Shamsud, Shamsul Haq Azim Ababadi. Right. Allah have mercy on him. And a recent scholar of hadith as well, Sheikh Yasser uh, Al Eid, Fathi Al Eid. He is doing the takhrij, only the takhrij. Hmm. The checking of the, the hadith. The checking of the hadith, of the, uh, uh, called Fadl al-Rahim al-Wadud, takhrij al-Sunani Abi Dawood. The, this is only the takhrij. And it is now up to 22 volumes have been printed. Subhanallah. 22 volumes. But he has uh, stopped at uh, zakah. This is not complete. It's Allah only the, cha the chapter of zakah, which is 1700 hadith only. He and and and, and um, the number of hadith in uh, Sunan Abi Dawood is about 52 to 5300 uh, uh, no, mm. no 5300 and only 1700 of it has been done takhrij and it's 22 volumes so if he keeps it up like that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extend his life to Ameen. do this book and many others to, uh, and ask him to grant him success to complete it it will be about 40 volumes subhanallah. once it's all said and done subhanallah subhanallah like 40 the, volumes just on checking the authenticity of the narrations. Subhanallah. Now, for those people that are laxed with quoting fabricated and weak narrations, you are insulting the works of these scholars. No Not only is it that you make your seat in hellfire by tying a lie to the Prophet wasallam, but even when you are not careful about the weak narrations, look at 40 volumes of work just to make sure you understand the authenticity and when people disregard that, it's an insult to that and no doubt a sin when you report to the Prophet ﷺ that which is not established from him. May Allah protect us and allow us to benefit from these works. Uh, 
think it's so so Tirmidhi. Allah, yeah then it's Tirmidhi afterwards mashallah one Al-Din. of the students of uh, azim abadi and this is the book right here tuhfatul ahwadi al mubarak puri uh-huh. and there is more than one there's safir rahman abu abd rahman you need to know uh-huh. not in another dars we can explain sometimes people look at like ibn mufli and they assume there's only one yani or, or, or ibn qudama yani there is many al maqatisa and so but here tuhfat al ahwadi here is one of the students of uh, azim abadi al mubarak puri has written recently like i said again these are recent scholars but this has very uh, much become now today the standard of in understanding the go to book to understand a tirmidhi uh, even though obviously we have Ibn Rajab who wrote an amazing work, but most of that unfortunately is lost except for the Ilal of At-Tirmidhi. And uh, we have other books that are earlier, but Alhamdulillah, this amazing work is here and it has been done. Uh, and, and the Sheikh is emphasizing that those are recent scholars, not to take away from earlier scholars. It of is course. just to encourage you, you, yes. everybody out there, that it is that the science doesn't stop, you mm-hmm. know, the religion doesn't stop, the, the education and learning doesn't stop. Uh, uh, helping in preserving the sunnah doesn't stop uh, 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 protecting the religion doesn't stop it's not gone you know what i mean it is on everybody's shoulder it's on everybody's responsibility uh, only one that loves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger they have to do whatever they can to go ahead and do it they may not be able to go ahead and and do that takhrij or do, they may not be able to go ahead and 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 articulate it or give it to people and stuff like that but be a part of it yes and if you don't want to be a part of it Make room for others to be a part of it. <laughs> don't be an obstacle. Yes. Don't be a hindrance. Don't be a hindrance. Don't be don't be something that will go ahead and stand on the for the in the stand of the da'wah. And 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 this is very important for us to appreciate that which was written, but also encourage the future to write because absolutely, uh, we could absolutely help the sunnah. Hmm. There is no doubt. And, and even if you are unable to write something like this appreciate the fact that it exists learn about it read it benefit from it if you don't know the arabic language and if you can't get to it go to your scholars go to the students of knowledge and benefit from them to make sure that we don't lose this treasure this treasure is sitting here but if you don't use it like if you have a person in a desert and you give them tons of gold they have no value for that gold (laughs) that gold doesn't benefit them until they can get to a place where they can sell it and buy what they need from it, then they understand. Mm-hmm. If we have this treasure and we don't use it, then it won't benefit. The, the, the scholar will get his reward, mm-hmm. but we will, we will be losers from it. But when we read it and when we preserve it and benefit from it and act in accordance to what is in it, then we benefit from the treasure. Faddalu. Uh, after a Tirmidhi, in order, uh, then an Imam al Nasa'i. Uh, uh, and here is the book of Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad bin uh, Adam al-Ethiubi uh, which is the 42 volumes that I spoke about and, uh, and, and wherein he went in also in a great detail of explaining uh, uh, that book oh, again great scholars before did, did hashia on it and explain it and stuff like that uh, we're just pointing out uh, the recent ones for the sake of encouraging the youth to do so. SubhanAllah, you see there the Hashia of a uh, You have uh, many of the early scholars have this work. These books, like uh, the Sunan of Imam al Nisa'i, uh, the Sunan of Adar Qutni, these are very difficult books to explain because they have many weak narrations. So when you get into the explanation of the weakness and so on, some people say Sahih uh, Sitta. This is an incorrect terminology. Kutub Sitta, you can say the six books. And this was a terminology just to understand, to make it easy when you write a hadith. Instead of having to write out Bukhari, Muslim, Dawud, Ibn Majah, and Nisaya, Tirmidhi, Ibn, so on, you would just write Sitta. There is also Sab'a that has the Musta Imam Ahmad in it. There is the Khamsa, there is the Arba'a. You can look at the Muqaddama of Bulugh, uh, and it explains, Ibn Hajar explains it. But these works does not mean that they're all Sahih Hadith. Now, some of the Christian apologists sometimes find a weak narration in one of these and try to push it. I want to be clear, Bukhari and Muslim are the only two here that have this goal of only Sahih Hadith. 
and Nisai ibn Majah, others, they have weak narrations, and these great scholars, classic and contemporary, have gone through them and explained this. And they never, no, those, those, the other four, other than the Bukhari and Muslim, they never claimed that they only of course. Gave, they never even attempted it, you know what I mean? Uh, they just narrated whatever thought that it will be beneficial for the Ummah to benefit from whether they be authentic or weak, and then they narrated the weak for us to know that it is weak. Mm. And we have to really emphasize that, you know what I mean? So these are the six books, and here we know uh, Ibn Majah. Mm. Uh, 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 it's this, the, the last six books of, of these six books that the scholars refer to. And um, uh, also it has uh, multiple explanation. Uh, we have five of them or so. And uh, uh, again, extremely beneficial. Uh, Al-Harari, also a new one. Mm. Uh, he also passed away recently as well too, uh, in Mecca as well. Uh, 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 a great scholar uh, of, of uh, Shafi'i uh, scholar that, that uh, really explained Sunan Ibn Majah and he did a great job uh, mm. uh, uh, at it as well too. Afterwards, you know what I mean, it comes then the, 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 other, the other Sunan books, the other Mustakhrajat, the other Mustadrakat, the other, mm. you know what I mean, whether it is Al-Bayhqi, whether it is uh, Ibn Hibban, whether it is uh, uh, Al-Tahawi, Mm. which is subhanallah uh, a great work that will go ahead and explain to you what what two hadith that may seem contradictory to you or difficult word that you do not understand imam al-tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala he comes and clarifies it for you and it will be like subhanallah and i want to make a point these are not based on fiqh meaning these scholars are of different madhahib no doubt yani when we talk about for example abu dawud uh, as Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid said, he was one of the strong Hanabila who co collected even the fiqh of Imam Ahmad. When you talk masal. about yeah. Masail Imam Ahmad, yes. Mm -hmm. You have a Tahawi, he is a Hanafi scholar. Mm -hmm. Even though his original training was in the Shafi'i Madhab, he was later a Hanafi scholar. Mm -hmm. And this is the work he did. Imam Al Bayhaqi here, for example. Mm -hmm. And this is the Sunan Al Kabir, which uh, with the Tahqiq, once again, this is the same one I have in my house, and I find it to be very beneficial. Uh, the tahqiq of Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Muhsin of Turkey, may Allah again, as I said yeah. earlier, may Allah reward him and his team and those that worked with him. They've done great work, as others, may Allah reward them as well. Amen. These works, Imam al Bayhaqi is Shafi'i, in Fiqh, he is a Shafi'i scholar. And so we don't go by uh, Madhab, yani we go by the Hadith work that they've done. We benefit from all these scholars and we love all of them. We don't just say, okay, I'm only going to benefit from the hadith work that was written by a Hanafi or a Shafi'i or a Maliki or a Hanbali or a Zahiri. No, this is, this is regardless of their fiqh, madab. this is their work in hadith. And many of them, like Ibn Hajar Asqalani, his teacher was a Zayla'i. A Zayla'i who wrote Nasab al-Raya is a Hanafi scholar and Ibn Hajar is a Shafi'i scholar. But that didn't stop them from benefiting from each other. These are madahib and fiqh, these are not differences in religions. Na'udhu billah. And on one of the things also we need to take note of is, although Al-Bayhaqi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is a Shafi'i, the Muhaqqiq is Hanbali. Hanbali. Yes. You know what I mean? We, we don't differentiate with that. And when we say Shafi'i and Hanbali, it is not like we are saying, like, like uh, we are segregating them. You know what I no. mean? What we are saying is, is, this is what they ascribe to. But when an authentic hadith come to them, they'll absolutely adhere to it. Of course. They were not, they were not, people that will follow their whims and desire. No. And, and, and uh, Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the introduction of, of uh, Sifat Salat al-Nabi, he mentioned then the statements of the four Imam, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, yeah. uh, and Ahmed, wherein all of them come to agreement and tells you that if this hadith is authentic, this is my madhab. Mm. If, if I say a statement that contradicts the Sunnah and the Quran and the Sunnah, then reject it, don't follow it. Of course. Uh, 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 anyone you could take from and reject, but the Prophet sallallahu you can't do so. You don't have that. You don't have that privilege. No. You know, it's a, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And nowadays terminology, if we could use it, it's a red line. <laughs> uh, you cannot pass. You cannot cross. Mm. Uh, whatever he says uh, is absolutely that it cannot be because why? Because it's all revelation. Subhanallah. Because it is all revelation. Uh, Allah, inshallah, will uh, uh, let's do this wall first, what, and then we'll what, go whatever, around. whatever you as want. As you say. wish. Well, this is this is the okay, hadith. We'll do here as well. The, the, this continuation of the hadith, you mm. know what I mean? Uh, you have the books of, of uh, uh, An Nawawi, uh. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, Ibn Kathir, uh, Al Suyuti. Uh, you, ha you have, Subhanallah, from all different types of, of, of uh, a school of thoughts. Uh, Mishkat, and this is the Sharh, the explanation of uh, another one of the Mubarak Puris, 
as I said, not to be confused with, for example, the uh, author of Rahiq, which is Safi al-Rahman. This is uh, Abu al-Hassan, which is Ubaid al-Rahman Mubarak Puri. This explanation of Mishkat was very recently printed with the tahqiq of Shaykh uh, Wasiullah al-Abbas. May Allah reward him and protect him. And this has been printed. Uh, you look on top, this is an explanation of Radha Salihin. Look how amazing. Radha Salihin, if you look in the end of the, of that's, the, the book, chef, yeah. that's the whole book. Look at this explanation. And this is a very beneficial work, Radha Salihin of Imam al Nabawi. May Allah reward him. And look at these scholars. I mean, we look at the Shusharah of Sahih Muslim, we mention al Nabawi. We look at the Radha Salihin, we mention al Nabawi. These scholars did great service for the Ummah. May Allah forgive them for their mistakes and uh, reward them for all their good. We don't take anybody as blindly other than the Prophet ﷺ. But we benefit from all of the works of the great scholars of Islam. So those are collection of narrations of books. And then here is something called the science of Zawa'id, hmm. which is the scholars have come and add. They said, okay, well, these uh, uh, were not mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim and stuff like that. So those are addition. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So this way it will give you the, 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 whole, the whole thing that has been narrated uh, uh, without, uh, uh, that is an addition to Al-Bukhari and Muslim or addition to the six books or an addition to the nine books. And you have absolutely the most important of them is yes. the, the uh, Majma' Al-Zawa'id for uh, uh, Al-Haythami. Al-Haythami. Uh, rah Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And then you have al matali for, for uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Again, is, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. You know this, I mean? this is Nuruddin Haythami, just so you can know the differences. Yeah. Uh, mashallah. Okay. Uh, this, is the, this is this is this is another science on the bottom is called Atraf al-Hadith. Hmm. Wherein the scholars will go ahead and get you the beginning of each hadith. And it will tell you where it is. They didn't have Google. Okay. They didn't have uh, 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 an encyclopedia of our computer -shamila or, or, -shamila or whatever to go ahead and for them to, to, to grab a hadith quickly. So what they did is they indexed every single hadith with the beginning of it. So therefore, it will tell you that's the beginning of the hadith and you could find it in these books. Bam, 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 bam. Subhanallah. And they mentioned them. And this is, again, now you've seen so many different sciences already, you know, and we are not done with the hadith. You know what I mean? It's, 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 they've took a great care to protect that religion for mm. us. Okay, this is the Atraf al-Hadith, this is also Atraf al-Hadith. And then we come to that, this is, I'm, I think you should take that one, Sheikh. Khalas. So here you have an amazing work, which is what's called Ilm al-Rijal. The science of collecting the biographies of the narrators. Now, because we have many non-Muslims that will be watching this, and many uh, not academic students, people who are just regular people, I want to be very uh, clear about what this is. Every narrator in hadith, if you narrate a hadith, whether it's in Bukhari or Abu Dawud, no matter if it's the Sahabi, the companion himself, all the way to the one who reported it to the scholar of hadith, we have their biographies. And if we don't, if we don't know who they were, we cannot accept hadith from them. This is called majhul. Majhul al-hal, majhul al-ain and so on. But this is where there are unknown narrators. Now, if we look at other religious texts, for example, if you look at the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, who wrote it? We don't know. Even MacArthur, he says, we don't know. Huh? If you look at Mark, Matthew, John, Luke, the ones that were not authors, they didn't write these books, but these books have been named after them. We challenge people to find out who was Mark's father. Who was, what was his last name? Who was he married to? How was his memory? We don't know. These are just first names given and sometimes an inscription just to a town and so on. And unknown people, people who were, as we see in the Bible itself, as the Christians quote, people that were not literate. They were people when they wrote, when they spoke, the rabbis were shocked that these common illiterate fishermen could do this. So they didn't write in Kone Greek. If at best they might have been writing in Aramaic, we don't have those. Now imagine, Quran, we have it, the chains. This is in Hadith even. We have biographies. If you look up here, there is a book called Al-Kamal Fi Asmar Rijal. It is in the middle of the volumes here. And this is by Abdul Ghani Al-Maqdasi, uh, Al-Hambali, a well-known great scholar of Hadith. Abdul Ghani Al-Maqdasi, what did he do? He collected the biographies of those great scholars 
that were narrators in the six well-known books. And then based on that, you have uh, Al-Mizzi, a Shafi'i scholar. Now, I just mentioned the Ramadan ibn Fiqh to show that this is not an issue of dividing the Ummah, but coming together As on the one. Sunnah. So, Abdul Ghani is Hanbali. Here you have Al-Mizzi who sees this beneficial work and, and summarizes, but his summary, mashallah, is bigger than the original because he adds more points of benefit and he writes, Al-Tahdeeb Al-Kamal Fi Asma Rijal. So he does an organization and a summary and he adds his own benefit. Then one of the scholars that again, mashallah, we've been mentioning repeatedly, Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he comes and does a work, Al-Tahdeeb on Al-Tahdeeb. <laughs> is mudaf, mudaf the, <laughs> yes. So here you have him also adding to it, and you see this in 15 very big, thick volumes here. And he is expanding and adding to the work. And then he has a single volume, abridgment of the abridgment of the abridgment. Oh. <laughs> and this is, mashallah, uh, the same print that I have uh, by one of the uh, recent ulama that have been ta doing tahqiq over there. Uh, but it gives you the hukam, the, the, the ruling on the narrator. You can go to the very abridged uh, taqrib and find that. And then if you want to go more, you can go backwards and go to a tahdib al tahdib of Ibn Hajar and get more details. And you can go back to Al-Mizzi's work and Abdul Ghani Al-Maqdasi's work. And you can find everything about these narrators. Where they lived, what did they do for a living, uh, how many uh, children did they have, who were they married to, what locations did they live in, who did they sit and benefit knowledge from, and who did they teach knowledge. So if somebody says they heard a hadith from a scholar that didn't live in the same town or the same time, then we know there could be tadlis, like there could be a hidden defect. Look at the precision of the science of hadith and the work done in hadith. And of course, uh, the, no, no library is a complete library within Tariq al Kabir for al Bukhari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wherein uh, he wrote it at the age. How old was al Bukhari, if you know? Book, with, huh? Yusuf, huh? Farhan, how was old was al Bukhari when he wrote it? He was 19. Yeah, MashaAllah, Sarah, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, Fiq. Yeah. He was 19 years old. And imagine this is the okay. first book he wrote, and it is in the most difficult science. It's the most, <laughs> the science of men. This is the most difficult book. And not only that, he was 19 years old, and then he mentions, he said, <laughs> had I not, like, due to the fact that I would have bored you, I would have mentioned more story about them. Subhanallah. You know what I mean? And I know more than what I'm written. But I don't want to bother you with it or bore you with it. The so details. I'll just give you the gist of it. Radhi Allahu Anhu. Radhi Allahu. Twelve anhu. volumes. Twelve, 12 volumes. As you can see. <laughs> yeah. Tariq Al Kabir, uh, a nineteen-year-old Bukhari, and his first work. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Subhanallah. One of the important books as well too, is it's a recent book. It's Tafqif Al Islam Bi Dabt Al A'lam. This is also a great book from the aspect of a narrator. What is his name and how do you pronounce it and valorization mm. of it? You know what I mean? Mashallah. How is it really uh, pronounced? Each and every single narrator. Mashallah. You know what I mean? And it is valorized. And again, the Sheikh hit on it. You know what I mean? That the Arabs back then, they were absolutely good in how to speak without dots, without accents, without valorization, without fatha, without dhamma, none of that, subhanAllah. But then later on, subhanAllah, when Islam expanded due to its beauty, the 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 the, the non the non Arab speaking uh, started not being able to pronounce certain words or certain letters. So therefore, then the the valorization and the dotted was introduced. Then it was introduced, and due to that, well, then the scholars have now taken it into another level. Well, every single narrator right now, and we have it in four volumes, that recently printed. It's a Jamaat Jam al-Sharqa, great work they did uh, from, from uh, al-Sharqa in, in the in, uh, United Arab Emirates. Where oh, all Allah. of the narrators, they went ahead and vowelized each and every single one of them to tell us exactly how we should pronounce each and every single uh, narrator of hadith, subhanAllah. And to that point, 
look at some people think Islam is only in one country or as if we uh, as those who want to follow the Salaf al-Salihin only stick to one country. No, you will see scholars we've mentioned here from India, from Pakistan, from uh, Sharqa, which is in the United Arab Emirates, from Kuwait, you will see different scholars from different countries that from Ethiopia that have put together their work and regardless of their race, regardless of their nationality, regardless of their uh, financial status, we benefit from them because of their piety, as Allah knows the hearts, but we see, and from their academic works. Alhamdulillah. Think. And then this is the, this is the book of Ilal. And of the, course, the this is. Uh, you know what I mean. This is. This is one I wanted to make sure I mention, even though we I don't have a lot of time. Imam Dar Qutni's work of Ilal is a standard, and is uh, yani something that I have personally benefited a lot from, uh, looking at the narrators of Hadith. Uh, and again, each one of these books deserves hours, <laughs> hours. <laughs> Subhanallah. Literally. Subhanallah. And then the science of hadith and how it is transmitted and, you know, it goes up to, to that point. And then from here, it starts the aqidah section. Hmm. And um, one thing, Sheikh, before we go sure, there, please. just I want you to benefit the viewers here. Some people, they tell us that hadith cannot be reliable because they're just hearsay. Can you give us a one short minute? <laughs> Wallahi, uh, you, you put anyone on the spot here. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, it's, we ought to know that the same people that narrated the Quran hmm. to us is the same people that narrated the Hadith to us. Allahu Akbar. The same Sahaba that we love and the same Sahaba that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khairun Nasu Qarni, the best of the generation is my generation, are the exact same people that narrated the the sunnah to us and and they took a great care for that abu huraira radiyallahu anhu arda he used to not leave the masjid and that is why he is the number one narrator of hadith hmm. he did not use although he became a muslim later on but he was the number one narrator of the hadith for a reason that he did not leave the masjid hmm. he said that i wanted to just sacrifice myself based on me just eating bites hmm. bites you know what I mean? And stuck to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To the point that you find in many narrations that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wallahi ya Abu Huraira, that I learned to lan yas'ali ahadun ghayrak. That I knew that no one is going to ask me before you. Other than you. Know, you. Other than you. Subhanallah. Due to, lima ra'aytu min harsika ala al-hadith. Due to what I have seen that your great care that you have given to the hadith. You know mm. what I mean? He was dedicated to go ahead and write it. He was dedicated to go ahead and... and and, and, uh, and transmit it to us. Uh, that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that please make supplication for me that I don't have bad memory, that mm. I have excellent memory. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam make that supplication to him. And then some of the tabi'een then wanted to test Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu arda. So they came and said, and, and at, earlier life, at the earlier stage of his, his life, say, and narrated some ahadith. So he said, okay, now he has gone old, Hmm. Right now, we want to go ahead and go back and check those hadith that he narrated earlier to us. So they went to him and said, could you please repeat that hadith? And he, radiallahu anhu arda, repeated it verbatim. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. Akbar. You know what I mean? We need to be proud of our sunnah. Yes. We need to be proud of our hadith. We need to be proud because, wallahi, it is preserved, not because we say, Wallahi, it is preserved. It is because what we see from the evidence that it is preserved. Yes. You know what I mean? We base, I know we say that we have, we have to have faith. There is no doubt. But we Muslim have faith based on what? Evidence. And evidence. Proofs. We don't just, have, we don't have something called a blind faith. No. You know what I mean? That a blind faith does not uh, exist. Rather, what it is, is, is that we have to go ahead and know that our faith comes from proofs comes from uh, uh, evidences that have been checked, that have been uh, uh, attested. Hmm. Uh, 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 and manna, the Sunnah is just the, as the Quran is being transmitted, hmm. the Sunnah is transmitted. Alhamdulillah. Exactly. The same people who did it, the same. Same. So why be any different? Why deal with it any different? You know, and, and they're both from Wahi. They're both Wahi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the reservation. Can you imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable to some something in the Quran that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not explain and then he mm. does not preserve it for no. you? 
How would you understand it? Then you'll have an argument. They say, okay, I didn't know. Hmm. I didn't know. So for so those who deny the sunnah and its preservation, alaykum bil ilm. Upon you is to seek knowledge and understand these uloom and what has been done. And if you don't have that time, keep your mouth quiet and ask the people of knowledge. Aqeedah. 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 As you know, there are different types of Aqeedah books. There are ones <coughs> that are based on narrations and sanad and chain of narrations and the, uh, the author. And those are the early, early scholars, you know, mm. the like of Imam Ahmed, the like of Imam uh, uh, Abdullah, his, his son, the like of Al-Ajurri, the right of Al-Barbahari, the right of uh, 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 Ibn Abi Asim, the like of, uh, uh, subhanAllah, Al-Khalal. Like, those have narrated the Sunnah to us with a chain of narration, i.e. all the way back to the Prophet. The Prophet and these are in the first 300 years. The scholars he's mentioning are from the early. So Aqeedah didn't develop over time as some of the people that got misguided by Yale have, are saying. This is the yeah. earliest scholars of the early Imam Ahmad, as we have mentioned about his Musnad. Yani he's born in the first hundred years, yani in, the, in, yani in the first, second centuries. Now, these people had recorded the Athari Aqeedah, the Aqeedah based on evidences in that time. And we have many, and they would call these books Sunan. No. The book of Sunnah, because the word Sunnah in this Talah of Aqeedah would be for the Islamic belief. And this is something done early on and preserved. The later scholars explained it further, but the Aqeedah, Alhamdulillah, the Athari Aqeedah is from the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam until today. Those Aqaid that, that deviated from that, bringing some of the you know, philosophy and ilm al-kalam, those developed later. That is true. Correct. Yeah. If you ask the Sahaba, they didn't know ilm al-kalam. They didn't do al-mantiq. They didn't deal with uh, Aristotle or any of these kinds of useless things. But they stick to the Athar. All of the Sahaba were Athari. They were on the Athar, the actual narrations. And that is the Aqeedah, alhamdulillah, we follow today. And, and when the Shaykh, Allah, say useless, see, you got to understand. Anything that does not benefit your religion is useless. Mm. Anything that does not increase your iman and get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is useless. Anything that will make you waste time and get you indulge into arguments and debates is useless. You know what I mean? This is from the angle where we're coming of useless. You know what I mean? M m might there be some benefits in it for some specific people, for a narrow, narrow field? For Sure. Yeah, in every, you'll find this in everything. You know, you find that in the sport, you find that in, 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 in art, you find that in... But what we are saying is, this, the, the philosophy and mantiq and, 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 and ilm al-kalam and, and the like of that, could, the evidence that we see right now, it led nothing but to the corruption. And it led us astray from the authentic religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because once you speak about your whims and desires and intellect, and we vary in our intellect and our understanding, hmm. we're not going to come to the same common term. Hmm. What you think is right, I may think it is wrong if I don't have the base foundation for it. So therefore, uh, uh, us uh, indulging into that or spending so much time and effort into that and make it the way to give da'wah, Wallahi, it is wrong. Hmm. It is not from the righteous predecessor's acts. It is not from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got mad at Umar. Umar radiyallahu anhu radiyallahu Allah, Allah. When he was, when he looked at the, at, at, at a, a small manuscript of, of the people of the book. Hmm. Uh, and, to, and asked him, another religion that you're seeking? Hmm. So can you imagine us indulging in, in, in the books of philosophy that has no uh, uh, direct benefit to your iman where it will get you closer to Allah subhanahu mm. wa ta'ala. It's a waste of time. Wallahi it is. So be careful of it. Faddalu. So, books of Aqeedah, some more. MashaAllah. Wallahi. MashaAllah. Again, Aqeedah, but we'll start with the... <coughs> We'll start with the fiqh now. You know, I think mm. it's, it's appropriate now. Fiqh, jurisprudence, or taking the evidences and taking the rulings to implement into our daily life. Uh, of course. Uh, also, they are done in a chronological order as well, too, uh, which is uh, Hanafi, uh, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali Madhab. Uh, something that some people may not know. 
that Imam Shafi is a student of Imam Malik. Malik. And Imam Ahmed is a student of Imam Shafi. Shafi. Well, Allah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It is, it is all of us, they are all, they are all students of each other. And mm. they all have taken from the same spring, from the same water, from the mm. same uh, 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 sweetness mm. of our religion. And so we start with the uh, sh uh, Hanafi, Hanafi uh, 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 books. Yes. And, and Bada, subhanAllah, uh, Sana'a, Sana this, yeah. is, this, is, this is essential book uh, uh, with regard to the Hanafi madhab. Uh, uh, likewise, uh, Mukhtasar al-Karhi. Yes. Uh, they call it also Mukhtasar al-Qaduri. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, so uh, Quduri, uh, this is the Sharh yani, written by Al Quduri on an earlier book. Yeah, al yeah. yes. It's a very important work. And one of the works I saw here that I definitely want to point out is the Hashi of Ibn Abidin. Uh, Ibn Abidin being one of the well known Hanafi scholars. And in my discussions, as I spend a lot of time in Pakistan and countries where a lot of Hanafi scholars, this is one of the books that they go to for the end all, for the Hanafi madhab. Because Al-Bidayah, I mean, uh, here you have, you have Al-Hidayah, you have other uh, shuruh of Al-Hidayah like you have here, mm -hmm. you have uh, Takhreej like Al-Nasab Al-Raya, Al-Diraya, which is Ibn Hajar's uh, Mukhtasir of uh, Zaylai's Nasab Al-Raya. Oh, Shafi. Yes. Ah, oh, Hanafi. Yes, it's very interesting, Allahu right? Akbar. So this is interesting. Akbar. There's a book called Al-Hidayah, one of the standard books of the Hanafi fiqh. One of the great Hanafi scholars of Hadith, Az Zaylai, who was from Somalia, very interesting, current day Somalia, um, he wrote a takhrij, a checking of the Hadith that are in Al Hidayah. And even, even though he's Hanafi, because he's a scholar of Hadith, he says that in this Hanafi fiqh book, Al Hidayah, there are Mawdu'a Hadith, they are fabricated. And he has his own terminology, he calls them Gharib. You know? And then his student, who's Shafi'i, Ibn Hajar Az Qalani, wrote a mukhtasar, he summarized it in a diraya, which is the new print, uh, three volume, very nice one, uh -huh. which I'm sure the Sheikh has, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, it's right here actually, yeah, a diraya. Um, this is Ibn Hajar, and we've mentioned him many times today, and he's Shafi'i, but he's doing this work on Hanafi books. I mean, because they didn't have that ta'asub, they didn't have that partisanship. Uh, but anyway, uh, Ibn Abidin, a very amazing and uh, standard book, to get to the final rulings. We see the Maliki Fiqh here as well. And we saw a book there. Uh, this is the Shuruh of the Muatta Imam Malik. Ibn Abdul Bar and his amazing work that he did in Maliki Fiqh and based on the Ahadith that Imam Malik collected in his Muatta. Uh, may Allah reward them uh, here. So yeah, this is, this is where the, the Fiqh of Imam Malik mm. starts. You know what I mean? This is the Maliki, of course. Uh, you have a Risala, it's, it's, it's a known. You have a Mukhtasar al Kabir as well, too. Mm. Uh, this is the Sharh for it. Uh, um, you have Al Kafi as long. Well. We, we also have a Kafi in the um, uh, Hanbali book. Hanbali book you know That's I mean? by Ibn Qudama. And this is by Ibn Abdul Bar. Ibn Abdul Bar. Uh, you have Kitab al Tafsir. Jami' al Ummahat Jam al Ummahat is, is an essential book as well, too, mm. in the Hanafi. Ibn Abdul Salam, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala. Mm. Uh, where this is the uh, new edition of, of uh, his release as well too. And then you have the Shafi'i Madhab as mm. well too. Uh, uh, the Shafi'i Madhab, the Shafi'is have done a great job really in, uh, in preserving their, uh, uh, they, they had a lot of people that were writing, you know what I mean? Yes. They wrote a lot in the Sunnah and they wrote a lot in the Fiqh. And, uh, they they, they emphasized a lot on, uh, what is Sheikh Ali? He'll be happy to hear that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, he emphasized. He emphasized a lot. They emphasized the the shawafa, uh, anhum, um, uh, What's it called about uh, writing? Uh, and they wrote a lot. Subhanallah. And they are known to be good writers. Uh, anhum. Okay. I think two very important books. Um, I'll, I'll I'll preference this first. This is the Majmu' of an Nabawi. Imam al-Nabawi that we mentioned about Radu Salihin, about his Sharh of uh, Sahih Muslim and so on. And uh, as I spent a lot of time with Shafi'is as well when I was in Jordan, mm -hmm. um, this is one of the books that they are usually going back to. Also Ibn Hajar al-Haythami, not Ibn Hajar al-Qalani, his Sharh of Imam al-Nabawi's uh, Talibin is also one of the standards that they go to, which is, uh, yeah, Rawat al-Talibin and the Sharh of it by Al-Haythami.
This is one of the ones that they go to for the standard of the Shafi'i Madhab. But Al Majmu'ah, which yani, you will find here, I think this is in 23 volumes. And there is another one that is 27 volumes. 27 volumes. Imam al Nabawi died at the age of 44. Yeah. At the age of 44, he left this dunya. And look at how these books were not written with laptops and, uh, you know, uh, iPads. These were with ink pens and pens that were being dipped and research. This is the kind of barakah that they had. The other book that... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I will just point out very quickly because I don't want to miss. Uh, this is a talkhis of Ibn Hajar al-Qalani again, <laughs> which is a checking of a hadith from another earlier Shafi'i book. And we use this a lot. Not necessarily from the fiqh of it, but from the hadith checking of it. Very, very important work. I recently got it as well. Same print. Barakallah feekum. Jazakumullah And And just, uh, uh, the, the scholars have said that Suyuti, rahimahullah ta'ala, has written the most number of books in every single field out there. Hmm. Uh, they counted in over a thousand books. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Uh, Suyuti who died 9-11, rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, in every single field, linguistic, the, the, Arabic, science, uh, uh, the um, hadith, Quran, tafsir, fiqh, uh, 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 medicine, uh, uh, whatever, whatever you want. You, there is a field out there he's written in it. Mm. Okay? And like, likewise, Imam uh, and, and Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, uh, he did a great job uh, uh, at that as well. Some of the scholars say, so, so imagine that and Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, died at 44 years old, mm. okay? Uh, scholars have said that if we were to take the author, the books that have been authored by Imam, authored by Imam and Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, and us just copy them, mm. we will, it will take us more than 44 years to do so. Allahu Akbar. It's Baraka, this is from Allah. More than 44 years. Mm. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put baraka in the knowledge. And but barakah in the scholars who had absolutely sincerity. And Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he was commenting on al Arba'in Nawiyah and Riyad al Salihin, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must have known the sincerity that an Imam mm. Nawawi had in his heart to make it a standard book in every household. Subhanallah. Riyad al Salihin, standard. standard book in every household, subhanallah. No matter what madhab you are, mm. no matter what, you find it in your household, subhanallah. And this is Sheikh Ibn Atameen said, Wallahi, may Allah may have lo- uh, the, knew the sincerity that uh, Imam al Nawawi may have had in his heart, and he made it absolutely widely spread mm. uh, to the people. But this is, and Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, it will take 44 years or not more to do his books. Can you imagine a Suyuti then? How long would it take? It? And I'm not talking about authoring, because as you know, <laughs> if you authored anything, to author a small little pamphlet, you know what I mean? It will take you. A long time. My, to do my, a very, my very small work on, Rab, on uh, Raf al took me seven years. So, uh, subhanallah. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Uh, in order for you to produce a good material, mm. it will take you that long. So now they are saying if you just copy. Mm. And th- there is a book that we're going to come to when we're talking about. Where Zad, Zad al-Ma'ad. Zad al-Ma'ad, of course. H- how did the Sheikh author it? On his travel to Hajj. Travel to Hajj. Ibn without, without references. Without yeah. no books. He offers, he, he goes ahead and offers a seven volume of the hadith of the Prophet and how he dealt with every issue. Everything. Allahu Akbar. Until today, no book has been written like it. No, none. It has the seerah, it has fiqh, it has zuhud, it has all of that in it. Yeah. References just from the top of his head, while the hardships of traveling not in business class and first class seats, traveling on camels and horses and on foot with bandits and all the hardships and of travel. And weather, of course. <laughs> in the Arabian <laughs> desert, yeah. right? On the way to Hajj. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. And this is again a continuation of uh, Shafi'i Madhab. Yeah. Uh, uh, and here we'll start the uh, Hanbali Madhab. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, we. we we lo- something we really, literally need to emphasize. We love all of the all of the imams. Yes. We follow all of them, not just one of them, not a single one of them. Rather, we follow all of them. Mm. And this is something that we have to go ahead and understand. We may ascribe ourselves to 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 one, but if we saw the truth based on the evidences with somebody else, 
we have no problem in following that because that which Allah commanded us with is to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam blindly. To follow him sallallahu alaihi wasallam blindly. But having said that, that does not mean we disrespect the other's opinion, hmm. none whatsoever. But we say that they have absolutely, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, that they have strived, and for the one who strived, will have and was correct, he'll have two rewards, and the one who's wrong, he'll have one reward. So we we'll know that they are rewarded, insha'Allah ta'ala. In this section, there is a lot of books that really deserve our attention. But the first one I will begin with, and the reason I'm beginning with it being the first, is our Shaykh, uh, may Allah have mercy on him, a Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, when he was asked, what is the greatest fiqh book ever written? When he was asked, and of course there are many that are great works, al muhalla ibn Hazm, al majmuah of al-Nabawi, and so on. But this work here, al mughni of Muwafuquddin ibn Qudama, Abu Muhammad, Muwafuquddin ibn Qudama, al-Maqdasi al-Hanbali, this is the book that he said was the greatest fiqh book ever written. So again, uh, this is a rich heritage that has come to us. Uh, one of the classic prints that the Shaykh has here, very difficult to get today, is the one that includes with it the Sharh al-Kabir. And this is something to understand. Um, Al-Mughni is written by Muwafuquddin ibn Qudama. His nephew, which is Shamsuddin ibn Qudama, he requested permission to rewrite it in accordance to the book called Al-Mukni'a. Because Al-Mughni is a sharh, it's an explanation of a very early text, the first matan in the Hanbali Madhab called Al-Khiraqi. It's a sharh of Al-Khiraqi. But Al-Khiraqi was not being used to teach Rather, another book than Muwafuquddin ibn Qudama. And ibn Qudama is another one of those underrated scholars mm -hmm. that people don't know as much as they should know. And he authored in every science. From hadith, we have in aqidah, lumatu atiqad, in fiqh, and so on. Ibn Qudama, he wrote a book called Al Mukni'a. And Al Mukni'a became the standard of teaching. So his nephew rearranged, adding some benefit, the book, and it's been printed together. And this was done with the tahqiq and the work of a Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Mosin in Turkey uh, and printed as well. Yeah. And you have here... Uh, the, the, the new print. Yes. Uh, yeah. MashaAllah, this is a very nice... I don't have this actually, but it's a very nice new print. Alhamdulillah, I have Al-Mughni, but uh, a new print that has been done. A lot of beneficial work on the ahadith and things has been done. Um, so, 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 Sheikh Abu Abdullah, uh, hmm. Muhammad bin Ali, he, he's from Yemen, great Sheikh, Allah, alhamdulillah, may I ask Allah uh, to preserve him. Um, what he did is he relied heavily on, on the book of, of Sheikh, uh, uh, he didn't go back to the manuscripts, uh, hmm. to my understanding. Rather, what he did is he relied heavily on the Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Mahsin, uh, Turkey's work. But then what he did, he added to it, you know hmm. what I mean? So this is... This is this book with an addition. Okay? Allahu Akbar. Uh, 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 so it's a beauty upon a beauty. And he took it and then he, he, he uh, connected that which is missing. He clarified some of the words. He, he did the takhrij of some of the hadith that he didn't do takhrij on. So it's a complementary or a completion of that. You know mm. what I mean? In order for us to get a more uh, complete set of that great uh, 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 book of fiqh. Uh, that the scholars have, have no doubt about it, said it is one of the greatest has been written in, in the field of it, you know. This book here, I have to say, if you are interested in the Hanbali Madhab, whether it, you follow it or you don't, you just want to know about it, you must have this book. This is a, a collection of three books. And this again, may Allah reward uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Abdul Mosin of Turkey and his team. I'm sure he has great people that work with him on this. Um, they put this together. The first here being Al Mukni', which, as we just mentioned, is one of the standards, or used to be at least one of the standards to teach the Hanbali Madhab. And it's written by Muwafuquddin ibn Qudama. With it is Sharh al Kabir, which is the explanation which Shamsuddin al Maqdasi, his nephew, wrote in rearranging. Al Mughni into the Abwab of Al Mukni'a, and with it Al Murdawi's Al Insaf. This is one of the very, very important books in the Madhab to know the different opinions within the Hanbali Madhab and to know what is finally the Hukam given as the Mu'tamid, as the relied upon opinion of the Hanbali Madhab. So, if you don't know Mu'tamid, if that is the 
opinion that is finally given as the classic opinion of the madhab. Um, and what the amazing, uh, what are the amazing things that I like about the work that Sheikh Abdullah uh, bin Abdul Muhsin al-Turki does and his team, they give a very organized way. So this up here will be the matan, the text from al mukni Then here is the sharh, the explanation of Shamsuddin al-Maqdasi, sharh al-Kabir. And then this, al-Murdawi's al-Insaf. And he writes which book is where. So if one doesn't have something in the next page, you don't get confused. Which, you know, if you read a lot, just makes it very easy to know here is the matan, al mukni here is the sharh explanation with the dilla and things, and then here is the khilaf within the madhab, and what is the madhab by al-Mardawi. It is in 32 volumes, it is an amazing work, uh, a rare work, and if you are any way interested in the madhab, you definitely need this book. Okay, and then uh, more books for Hanbalis, of course. Uh, you have to talk about this book, Sheikh. Allah, I have benefited from this work like no other. And this is not the work of one scholar. Uh, a group of scholars came together and it will mention uh, the, their different names and each volume. in each volume. Amazing. What they did, they took the mufradat. Mufradat, what does that mean? And this is a very important video for Tulab Ilm to also understand terminologies. These are the unique opinions of the madhab. So every madhab has some opinion that's unique to them. So in here, these are the unique opinions of the Hanbali madhab. Yani only the Hanbali madhab would have this view. So what they did is they mentioned this opinion. They mentioned where is it mentioned in the books of the Hanbali madhab. What are the other opinions from the other scholars on this issue? What are the evidences for the Hanbalis to hold a, such a unique view? What are the evidences for the other madhahib and what is their views? And then a summary on what is authentic. See, it gives you the adilla, the evidences. I have benefited from this work a lot, especially when I was teaching, uh, and I am currently teaching, the books of fiqh. When you would come to an opinion that is only held in the Hanbali madhab, to know why they took it, what are the evidences, what are the evidences of the other three madhahib, why they didn't take it, uh, it's an amazing work. SubhanAllah. Uh, we are really running short on time over here. Khalas. The prayer. But, you know, then we have the Zahiri Madhab, then we have the Fiqh al you know, uh, uh, regarding it, and then we and have That's the important. Ajma'at. They're not just for madhahib, remember that. <laughs> Yeah, again, absolutely, there, there isn't. And then we have little mausu'at that will go ahead and summarize uh, uh, these madahib uh, together and give it to you in an easy way uh, 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 to be written. Uh, of course, this, this is Bidayat al-Mujtahid. This is, this is from the classical books uh, where he goes, uh, he goes ahead, and Nurus uh, al-Hafid, he goes ahead and, and he, he mentions the difference of opinion among the scholar and why they differ and the proofs for us differing and then his opinion on what he thinks it is the most authentic you know mm. what i mean and then uh, uh, a sheikh uh, 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 al waili from qatar hafizahullah ta'ala has uh, uh, explained it and uh, the great uh, uh, ustada uh, kamal al kawari hafizahullah she did a great job in almost every field by the way it's a female uh, contemporary, contemporary scholar, scholar. 16 volume thick and this is not the only work she's done work on uh, al mukni al as well right Raud yeah, as well yeah uh, in the hanbali fiqh yeah this is a sister this should be inspiration for our sisters uh, Doctora kamila may allah protect her uh, in out of qatar she's writing many great works uh, as a contemporary female Muslim scholar. In Aqeedah, she has book. In Arabic mm. language, she has book. In Balagha, she has books. In, Allahu in, Akbar. In Fiqh, she has books. Wallahi, may Allah preserve her tremendously. Amen. And this is, again, knowledge is not for, it's not for men only. Yes. It's for everyone. Mm. It is for everyone. I think we... Uh, I, Inshallah, maybe maybe we could come back to it. Inshallah, Taala, so we could pray the whole. Inshallah. And then, uh, um, or if you want to just go a little quick, Inshallah, Taala, so we could get. I think it. we just get it quick, Inshallah. We finish it, Inshallah. We've covered. Okay. Well, 
Uh, well, uh, after the fiqh over here that is written in a text form, then there is the the the, the hadith. They have we have the books of, of of fiqh that is based on the hadith, that ahkam. is based on the hadith, a hadith al ahkam, the rulings mm -hmm. that is based on a uh, hadith, an uh, umda uh, and and bulugh al maram, al muntaqa, and and so on and so forth. Majdu Din ibn Taymiyyah, the grandfather of Taqiyu Din ibn Taymiyyah. The grandfather of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, you know what I mean? And then you have different fuqh books. Uh, I want to emphasize something over here. Uh, this, this over here is an encyclopedia of uh, regarding uh, money transactions um, that, that deals with the nowadays uh, terminologies or nowadays mm. issues that we face, uh, which is absolutely essential to have uh, because there are some of the terminologies that we have right now that uh, they, they did not exist then. We have some of the transactions that we have right now that did not exist then. But b this encyclopedia was almost comprehensive in gathering these things and putting it in one place wherein we could have it as a reference to go back to. And again, we have fatawa about mu'amalat and we have, you know, oh, this whole section has to do with money and money transactions. And afterwards, we have usul al-fiqh that comes afterwards. And of course, no library is complete without kitab al-um. Or a risale for Mamma Shafi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. You know, in Usul al Fiqh, I'll just one point on one thing. This is Wadih, the Usul al Fiqh. This is by Ibn Aqil al Hambali. There is Sheikh Abdullah ibn Aqil recent, but this is the classic Ibn Aqil Abul Wafa. According to many of the scholars, he wrote the biggest book ever written, Al Funun, 700 volumes. It's been lost today, but this is one of the greatest books in Usul al Fiqh, hardly studied nowadays, but a very important book, Al Wadih, Fi Usul al Fiqh. And the tahqiq again was done by Sheikh Abdullah bin Adal Mosin of Turkey. So, after Usul al Fiqh, we have an uh, encyclopedia of one of the greatest encyclopedias there is, uh, Mawsu' al Fiqhiyah, that is printed by Wazarat al Awqaf, the, the Ministry of Islamic Affairs of Kuwait. May Allah reward the Ministry of Kuwait, uh, they're doing amazing work. Doing a great job, doing a fabulous job. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them tremendously. And they have played a big factor, by the way. In, in, in providing us with many of these uh, books that we have in our library. May so Allah subhanahu, jariya for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them. Yeah. Uh, along, along with the, um, um, subhanAllah, many of the people of Kuwait, Wallahi, may I, I can't thank them enough for, for their tremendous uh, generosity. SubhanAllah. Uh, and again, this is, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Mawsu'a, this is, this is the uh, fatawa sharia, and then they abridged it in 12 volumes where they took all of this 31 volumes and then made it into 12 volumes concise precise organized correctly so it will be easier Mashallah. for us to find and of course fatawa al kibar al ulama and their abhath and their researches is all there as well too um, and then afterwards over there we come to the uh, to the arabic language of course you know mm. uh, all of the dictionaries and uh, the science of it and uh, you know, Lisan al Harab Kamus Mahid, Taj al Harus, which is 40 volumes. Allahu Akbar. 40 volumes of uh, word by word letter, uh, by letter uh, uh, explanation of our beautiful Arabic language. Mm. Um, so, this whole section is, is uh, has to do with the language and the Arabic language. Uh, whether it's Sarf, whether it's Nahu, whether it is Arab, whether it's Balaha, Balaha, yeah. whether it is uh, a dictionary, whether, subhanAllah, it is, it is absolutely comprehensive. And afterwards, we come to uh, the books of Tariq. Uh, mm. uh, first of all, although those are not the earliest books of Tariq, but due to their nobility of what they are talking about, I put them in front, mm. which is talking about Mecca and Medina, uh, the two holy, uh, the two holy uh, uh, cities. Have to admire the Sheikh's dedication on how well he even organized the way he put the books. May Allah preserve him. So, uh, so those take precedence, and then of course Tariq al Tabari, and then afterwards mm. Dars, uh, Tariq al Baghdadi, uh, and um, Ibn al Athir, and so on. Uh, books, books of of, uh, of Tariq. This is Bidaya wa Nihaya Ibn Kathir, another scholar that you repeatedly hear the name Ibn Kathir. In Tafsir, we heard it. Here, we're hearing it. In Ulum al Hadith, we have it. It shows the great work in different sciences done by these great ulama. And, and, and alhamdulillah, we have scholars that not just one dimensional scholars. Mm. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Again, like you've heard that the Suyuti wrote in every science. Mm. And there is also, like, we can't forget mentioning Shaykh al Islam, which we will, inshallah, mm -hmm. in a minute, inshallah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but they wrote in every single field out there subhanallah and this is subhanallah mm. testament to their, their uh, uh, greatness wallahi alhamdulillah then we have the seer of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu excellent collection of thors you know there is a uh, seer of ibn hisham one of the earlier books has been written about it uh, uh of excellent excellent really mm. uh, seer book uh, about that one of the uh, recent ones al maknun sheikh musa ibn rashid al azmi hafizahullah uh, excellent books about uh, the seerah as well too. Um, uh, ha- absolutely beneficial. Yeah. Yeah, this book I've benefited a lot from in my seerah durus. Uh, recent scholar, amazing work, great references. Uh, Dr. Amri has the seerah sahiha. I've also benefited a lot from that. May Allah reward all these scholars in their work. This is over here is a books of Raja, uh, books of Tarajim, you know what I mean? Seerah mm. Alam Nubal, again, a Zahabi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. A giant, another uh, giant another in knowledge. <laughs> we mentioned him earlier in the Ilmur Rijal section and his science of checking hadith. And here in his Tariq, Siyar Alam al Nubala, one of the best and the most amazing, huge works. Look at, I think this one is in 28 Eight. volumes. 28. Inshallah, I believe mine is. 32, the Mashallah. smaller volumes, but oh. amazing work. Yeah. Then this, this is the book of general books, you know what yeah. I mean? General topics, uh, comprehensive topic. Uh, uh, it could be sometimes in the, in the benefit of, of language. It could be the terbiyah, teskiyah, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, sincerity. Uh, it could be, and it has to do with season and benefits. Uh, mm. um, it could be uh, statements that we say often and yeah, subhanallah, we think they are okay, but then they come to find out that we shouldn't say them. Hmm. So it's, 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 it's a general check, uh, b- virtuous actions and their benefits hmm. and what they mean. So it's a general section, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. This is uh, one of my favorite sections. Uh, I think the whole library is my favorite, but <laughs> I will let the sheikh speak about this. Uh, this is... The Sheikh of our Sheikhs. Uh, this is the Sheikh, of, you know, for sure, of a majority of my Sheikhs. You know what I mean? And that is the Sheikh uh, Muhammad bin Salih Taimi, Rahimahullah. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Uh, he died uh, 14 and 21. And he, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, benefited the Ummah tremendously. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to shower him with mercy. Hmm. And, um, uh, the majority of these books were not books that he has actually written. There are those that he has actually written. But the majority of these books are actually books of his lectures. Mm. You know? And uh, Sheikh Muhammad Musalli Thameen, my Sheikh Salam al-Tawil, Allah, said that in the beginning of the, in the beginning of uh, people seeking knowledge with him, he was not known. He was not famous. Mm. He was not, uh, you know, there was about five, six people that would, attend, that would attend his class, subhanAllah. And, and uh, but then subhanallah, some people made a lie about him. And that is why he authored uh, 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 his book about the Asma'u al Sifat. Hmm. Uh, uh, and, and because of that lie, then he became famous. <laughs> subhanallah. Is as of subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing his sincerity in his, 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 his action, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please. Have mercy upon him and mm. uh, shower him with uh, blessings. Uh, these are lectures that he's been given, and then the the muassasa and other scholars, and then have taken into their responsibility to write it down and and transcribe it from the, and then they edited it because sometimes you may say something in an amia or, mm. or uh, you know, and and may not be appropriate, you know, in a writing form. So they may have fixed it from that aspect of things. And, and but preserve the actual work of the Sheikh uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And if you could tell, this is the, like the biggest section of my of the library over here. Uh, it, it, it consists of like two full uh, almost uh, 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 closets of, of books, of bookshelves. Hmm. And um, we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to unite us with him in al Firdaus al-A'la ma Sayyid al-Mursaleen wa Imam al-Muttaqeen. He authored also in every field. You'll see in the tafsir, you'll see in the hadith, you'll see in the usul al-fiqh, you'll see in the fiqh uh, 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 itself. You see fatawa, you see general topics, you see in the Arabic language, you see, uh, uh, subhanallah, a scholar among the scholars. Rahim, radiyallahu anhu. 
I want to point out a couple of his books particularly and one of them being Sharh al-Mumti' ala Zadul Mustakni' This is one of the classic Hanbali Mutun Zadul Mustakni' and Shaykh ibn Uthaymeen, he made an explanation of it uh, in Durus like the Shaykh mentioned and it was written down by his students, may Allah reward them. And subhanAllah, many scholars have said that in our generation, this is the greatest book of fiqh written from this generation. May Allah reward him and accept it from him. Um, he has many, many work, works that are beneficial. Uh, he has his sharh, bulugh al-maram and so on. But his taliq on al-kafi of Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi is also one of the works that he has really benefited the Hanbali madhab in teaching and understanding. And he is a scholar who always followed the dalil. You will find in Sharh al mumtiya many a times when he saw the evidence to be strong, he left the madhab. And that is the way of the Hanabil as well, to stick to the evidence. And that's the way we should be. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The, the, this section over there is, is inshallah, we'll end with that, inshallah mm -hmm. ta'ala. Uh, it's the section where uh, this wall is dedicated for the scholars and their uh, works. And, um, uh, and, and, and it starts by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. And... Uh, the, 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 the books that have been authored and again in every science and in every field uh, and you know his fatawa is, 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 is known for every uh, this known. is amazing new collections the Sharh al-Umda Umda being the book of Mufaqdeen ibn Qudama and Hanbali Fiqh and his explanation but this one scholar classic Taqiyuddin Shaykh al-Islam Abu Abbas ibn Taymiyyah look at the amount of work he did and the khidmah he did for the ummah at the same time standing up for what is right and fighting against the Tatar and getting the Ummah to defend the Muslim lands. This is the great heritage that Muslims have inherited and need to preserve. And then from the Hassanat of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala is his student, Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah Subhanallah. That's his student, subhanallah. Mm. And, then, and then he also has so many different books in different science and different Amazing. field. And then we gathered the, the book of Sheikh Ibn uh, al Majmu'ah. Uh, Majmu uh, this book, Zad al Ma'ad. Oh, that's Zad al Ma'ad. Yep. This is six volumes. You can see up here. If I was taller, I'd touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but this book, Ibn al Qayyim wrote while traveling to Hajj. Yeah. Imagine. No, re no, references, no, no references, no books, no Google, no Maktaba Shamila. And he quotes this hadith in Muslim, this hadith in Bukhari. Until today, nobody wrote a book like it. Okay. And then you have Majmu Ibn Kamal Basha, Sheikh Mullah Ali Qari, you have Amir Salani, you have Al Mar Al Kirmi Al Hamdali, you have Sunnah Al Sunnah. So you, then you have scholars and what they have authored, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Al uh, Shanqiti, Al uh, uh, Muallimi, uh, uh, Muhammad Ibn Ibrahim, the Sheikh of Sheikh Bin Baz, yes. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And then you have the Sheikh Bin Baz, you have uh, Sheikh Al Alam Al Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Rahimahullah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, all, all of them. And this is a section again that, you know, we just put together as an honor of some of the greatest scholars in the past and, and, and recent. May Allah bless the Sheikh and bless the community Amen. here in Ogden, Utah and all of the state of Utah and all of America Amen. and around the world to benefit from this collection of the heritage. Just two points. One is the li literature, literature and academic heritage of Islam is unmatched by any other religious yeah, tradition. Yep. And secondly, this work has been painstakingly preserved by the early scholars from the time of the Salaf onwards till our time and needs to be taken up by the youth to take further and benefit from and benefit the world from. Jazakumullah khairan. Hayyakumullah. Sharf lana is an honor for us to be here and to go through here. And we hope that Allah allows us to benefit from you and your library. كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السرائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق
الطريق حاضرة كل السرائر باب